Hi everyone, welcome to Automotive Diagnosis YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm making this video to explain everything needed to understand and to inspect and repair the CAN bus in the cars. Uh, because uh, I've seen many questions about the CAN bus. Uh, first of all, for understanding uh, the CAN bus basic itself and how to uh, inspect the CAN bus. So in this video, I'm going to start from the CAN bus basic. So I will explain uh, how many types of CAN bus we may have in the cars and how uh, these CAN bus uh, are connected to the control units or to each other and how you can find it uh, in the car as well. Uh, after understanding uh, the CAN bus itself and the structure of the CAN bus, uh, we will see how we can check the CAN bus resistance. Then uh, we inspect the CAN bus voltage and we're going to do this to only with using a multimeter. So it's going to be a quick inspection. Then we will see uh, what's going to happen if we have any problem in the CAN bus, like a short to ground, and how we can find it uh, just using a multimeter, how we can find if there is any short to ground if in any of the, the canvas. Then we will have a look at the waveform of the canvas. We're going to use the picoscope to read the waveform of the canvas and we will see if that short to ground happens on the canvas, what's going to happen to the waveform uh, when you are reading the waveform using the picoscope. Okay. So, first of all, before starting to talk about the basic of the canvas, it's really important to know why do we need to have a CAN bus. Uh, first of all, if you compare these two cars, one from 2002 and the other one on the right is 2023. They are both same cars. They are Toyota Camry. But comparing these two, what's going to tell you? Uh, obviously, comparing these two, the first thing which is going to come to our mind is how many new technologies uh, we are using right now on the new model. So obviously the new model doesn't have only uh, the external features. It's going to have so many electronic control units, so many uh, new systems and new technologies, and obviously so many wiring and so many connectors. If we just use the conventional way to connect all these control units together, what's going to happen to all those wirings? This is the standard configuration if we just use the normal hard wire uh, for sending any signals between the units. All right, so what's going to happen? We will have too much wiring. We will have so many connectors. And believe it or not, many problems on the uh, electronic systems uh, come from actually from the connectors and from the wiring. And when it comes to repair any electronic system, Having so many wiring and so many connectors uh, is going to make our life so much harder. So instead of using a standard configuration, uh, we need to find another way to minimize this wiring as much as we can. So the best solution was using a CAN bus, which is a network, to minimize the wiring as much as we can. As you see, in the CAN bus configuration, we have way less connectors. Uh, when we compare it to the standard configuration. Uh, when I compare these two, I'm not trying to say that we don't have any hardwire connection anymore. We just have the CAN bus. No, of course not. But CAN bus is there to minimize the need for having all this uh, wiring. So it means if, if we need to send one signal to multiple units, uh, we don't need to use many hard wires to send this uh, signal individually to any control unit. We can just use the network to share it with uh, other control units. For example, here. So if you look at this configuration, you will understand what uh, I'm trying to say. So what you see on the left right here, this is the crankshaft position sensor which is going to send the engine RPM signal to engine control module. So 
obviously we have some other control units which need the engine RPM signal. But do we have multiple uh, crankshaft position sensors? No, we don't. We only have one. So it means we only have one crankshaft position sensor to read the engine RPM and send the signal to engine control module, which we call it ECM here. So what's going to happen for other control units that need the engine RPM signal? I'm going to just uh, mention some of them because there are so many units, so many control units that need the engine RPM. For example, right here, we have EPS, electronic power steering, which needs the engine RPM signal to, to know when engine is started. We know the four-wheel drive system. We have the air con. Air conditioning also need to receive the engine RPM signal. We have ABS or ESP, uh, and we have transmission control module as well. And what we have on the right is the instrument cluster. Obviously, this unit needs the engine RPM as well to, uh, to show the engine RPM to the customer. So in this case, instead of uh, sending the signal individually to all control units, what's going to happen, ECM is going to share the information using the network. So what you see right here, this is actually representing the network. And ECM is going to uh, send the engine RPM using this network to all these control units. So we don't have individual wires for each uh, single signal. And this is only one example because there are many signals that ECM needs to share with other control units. And obviously, other control units need to share some information with, uh, uh, with some other units as well. So what's going to happen? instead of having so many hard wires, we just have one network right here to share the information. So it means any of these control units like uh, electronic power steering, this one can send the information uh, through the CAN bus. It can share the information through the CAN bus for all other control units, or it can receive the information uh, from the CAN bus. So you see how uh, how much uh, this configuration is going to minimize uh, the need for wiring and for connectors. Uh, so let's talk more about the CAN bus itself. Let's see how these control units are connected to the CAN bus. So generally, as you see here, all the control units are connected in parallel to the CAN bus. So it means CAN bus is a uh, multi-master uh, network. It means if something happens for one of these control units, CAN bus still is going to work. So we can say CAN bus is a multi-master network. It means every control unit in a CAN bus can send and receive information individually. So do we have any other physical control unit externally that we can uh, find and we can see and we can say this is uh, actually the CAN controller? No, because the CAN controller is built inside any control unit which is connected to the CAN bus. So what we see here, CAN physical interface. So this is the CAN physical interface. So it means the CAN IC is actually installed in, inside any of these control units. So it means if this control unit receives any signal from the CAN, this CAN physical interface is going to receive the information, uh, is going to convert it to uh, a message that uh, internal program of this ECM can read and then it's going to send it to the internal program. OK, so all control units are like this one. So you don't see any physical control unit that you can point at and you, you say this is the uh, uh, can, uh, can controller. No, the only thing you see is just the normal control units inside the car and this 
uh, twisted wires, a pair of twisted wires, uh, which actually represent the CAN. So uh, our CAN bus uh, is actually made of uh, just a pair of twisted wires, as you see right here. Between these two uh, wires, one of them is called CAN high, the other one is called CAN low. So between these two, I can I can say this one is can high, and the other one here is uh, can low. So what do I mean by saying can high and can low? Uh, am I referring to high speed and low speed? No, not at all. Yes, obviously we have high speed can, we have low speed can, we have different classes of the can that each one of those classes uh, is going to give you different speed. But here, when I say can high and can low, I'm not referring to the high speed or low speed. But between these two twisted wires, they have different voltages. So when I say can high and can low, I'm actually representing to each of these two wires because one of them is going to give you higher voltage, the other one is going to give you lower voltage. So when CAN bus is functioning, the voltage on CAN high is going to change from 2.5 volt to 3.5 volt. So this is the voltage on CAN high. But what about on the CAN low? On the CAN low, voltage is going to drop from 2.5 to 1.5. So this is actually the amount of voltage that we can receive and we can measure on the CAN bus. We will see how we can uh, inspect and how we can measure the uh, voltage using a multimeter and using a picoscope. So it's really important to know that what we are talking right now about uh, the CAN bus is actually the high speed CAN. Uh, which is normally sometimes is called C CAN. Okay. So this high speed can has all these features because, because this voltage that I told you, it's only for the C can. When we are talking about the different type of can, like body can, this voltage is going to be different. So this voltage is only for only for C can. Okay. So what is the specific about this CCAN is actually the speed. So normally uh, this class of the CAN is going to give you this speed between 125 kilobit per second to 1 megabit per second. This is actually the other advantage when we are using the network. Not only we are uh, using less wiring, less connectors, and uh, troubleshooting procedure is going to be much easier, but also we are transferring the information much, much faster, which is going to make all the systems more reliable. All right, we already know that we are talking about the CCAN, and as you see, all the control units in the CCAN are connected to CAN high and CAN low in parallel. But we need to we need to think about uh, these two points of the uh, circuit as well. Uh, obviously, we cannot connect these two circuits together to make a full parallel circuit because these two uh, wires, each one of them has different uh, voltage because one of them is the can high, the other one is a can low. And on the other hand, if we don't connect these two together, what's going to happen? We we won't have a parallel. We won't have a full parallel circuit. We need a parallel circuit to stabilize the voltage, otherwise a serious problem is going to happen to our ECUs. So what's going to happen, how can we connect uh, these two lines together without having any problem? So what we have here, we have terminating resistor 120 ohm on each end. So what's going to happen by having these ones, we won't have any other problem for connecting these two lines together. It's really important to remember that these two terminating resistors are only used on C CAN. So if you're uh, troubleshooting the body CAN, you won't have the terminating resistor anymore. 
So uh, where are the locations of these terminating resistors? Normally, most of the time, uh, this one, most of the time is inside the ECM. So I haven't seen anything different on most of the cars I've seen. Of one terminating resistor is installed inside the ECM. But what about the other one? The other one can be different. I've seen many different cases for the other one. Sometimes it's uh, inside the ABS or uh, ESB module. Sometimes it's inside the instrument cluster. I've seen I've seen that sometimes inside the uh, interior fuse box, IP junction box. Uh, and sometimes it's an external uh, resistor. So for, for, for finding this one, you need to have a look at the wind diagram to see uh, where is the location of the terminating resistor. But I'm going to uh, explain how uh, you can uh, measure the total resistance for, uh, for the candles. So as far as we know, we have two uh, terminating resistors each one 120 ohm, and we, and we know that this circuit is full parallel circuit. So uh, later on, I'm going to explain how to inspect uh, and how to measure CAMBOS resistance. Uh, but it's really important to know what's going to be the total resistance when you are measuring. So this one is actually uh, a parallel circuit. So for checking the total resistance in a parallel circuit, we need to just use this formula, one by our total is going to be equal to 1 by R1, 1 by, 1 by R2. OK, so here we have R1 and R2. These two are referring to the terminating resistor. So we can say 1 by 120 plus 1 by 120, right? So it's going to be like this. 1 by R total is going to be 2 by 120, which is going to be 1 by 60. OK. So the total calculation is going to be R total is going to be something close to 60. So this is what we are after. OK. So when we are. Uh, checking the CAMBOS resistance, uh, we are actually uh, going to measure something close to uh, 60 ohms. And I'm going to uh, show you guys how to uh, find the inspection point and how to measure. Uh, so I already told you that we have the C can or power train can. Uh, so some control units like the engine control module, uh, transmission control module, four-wheel drive, electronic power string, aircon, ABS, ESP, uh, and instrument clusters, all these units are connected to the CCAN. We may have some other control units because I, right here I'm not uh, referring to all the control units because each different car may have uh, more or less control units. But on the other hand, we have some other uh, some other classes of the can as well, like the body can. So body can normally is used for communication between some control units inside the car, and, and normally it's going to give you less speed. Between these control units, you may see some of them which are connected to uh, uh, two different type of cans, for example, uh, instrument cluster. So this cluster is connected to uh, C can and body can at the same time. Or this one, smart key control module, in this case is connected to uh, power train can and uh, body can. But between these ones, sometimes we have some information that must be sent uh, from one unit in the C can to another unit in the body can. For example, the reference for vehicle SP signal is uh, ABS and ESP control unit, but some other control unit like the BC and body control module might need this information as well, for example, to uh, 
uh, lock or unlock the doors uh, automatically. So what's going to happen? BCM is connected to the body can, but uh, ESP is actually on the C can. So these two don't have any uh, direct connection. So how how can these two control units share the information? That's exactly the time that we have the gateway. So gateway is actually one control unit which is connected to uh, two different type of can uh, to share the information between them. So it means when vehicle SP signal is needed on BCM, ESP is going to send the information of the vehicle speed through the CCAN to instrument cluster. So cluster is going to receive the information in a CCAN, then it's going to confirm it to another format for BCAN and it's going to send it in the BCAN. So cluster is going to work as a gateway to receive the information from one unit in a CCAN and convert the signal to a BCAN uh, to send the information to uh, that control unit. So as you see, as I said earlier, smart key control module is connected to uh, CCAN and BCAN as well at the same time, but this one is not, this control unit is not playing a gateway role. Gateway in this case is on the instrument cluster, even if a smart key control module is connected, in, connected to, uh, to CAN at the same time, that one is not going to play a gateway role. The other important uh, item is actually uh, this one, which is your scan tool. Your scan tool is going to get connected to the CCAN as well uh, from DLC connector. So you have the DLC or OVD2 connector, which is connected directly to the CCAN to diagnose the uh, to diagnose all the control units connected to the CCAN. So this is really important but your scan tool to diagnose other control units which are not connected to the CCAN is going to use another diagnosis communication line, which is normally uh, sometimes, which is sometimes a K line. So that's uh, different. For example, in this case, uh, your scan tool is not going to diagnose the BCM using a CCAN. So this, this is really important fact uh, to know. Okay, let's have a look at this wine diagram for one car that has uh, three different type of can. Uh, so we will see what control units are connected to each one and we will see the gateway for each one as well. For example, this one is uh, actually C can at the top left. So some control units like uh, electronic power steering, we have the uh, RS or airbag. We have the steering angle sensor uh, right here. We have the smart parking assist, uh, tire pressure monitoring system, uh, electric parking brake module or EPB, lane keeping assist system right here. Uh, we have engine control module right there. In this case, a uh, vacuum pump is connected to the CAN bus as well and blind spot detection system as well. So these are the units which are connected only to uh, the CCAN and a couple of other units right down here, like the TCM transmission control module. ABS is right here as well, or ESB. If your car has ESB, obviously ESB is connected to the uh, CCAN. So we have some other control units uh, in between, uh, like the uh, navigation system. Uh, AC panel, instrument cluster, and a smart key control module. So these units, the, all these units are connected to the CCAN. But with, between these ones, we have uh, we have uh, gateways as well. If you look uh, down to the right or to the left, we have B can in here for body can, and M can right on the left for multimedia can. So we have two other cans here, multimedia can and uh, body can. So for multimedia can, we have the audio system and amplifier. These two are connected to uh, the multimedia can. And as you see, uh, we have two other control units, uh, AC control units right here and navigation right there as well. 
between these two, one of them is actually the gateway between the M can and uh, C can. So we can, I can just write it here. Uh, AC is going to be actually gateway for C can and multimedia can. So in this case, we already found one gateway. Navigation is not a gate gateway in this case. But what about for the B can, for the body can? For the body can, we, we see the BCM, we see the head unit, we see driver IMS module or integrated memory system. We have the smart junction box as well. But right here, we have a smart key control module. As you remember, we had it in the previous uh, uh, section and we have the instrument cluster as well and I explained already that between these two only instrument cluster is the gateway between uh, CCAN and body can so it's going to be cluster will be again gateway for CCAN and Body. But how can we reach to the CAN bus uh, to, uh, to start inspecting the CAN bus? As I said earlier, this video is talking only about the CCAN. Even if we refer to multimedia CAN and body CAN earlier, it was just to show the structure, to show the gateways. But this one is this, but this video is generally talking about the diagnostic procedure and, and uh, the basic of the C can or high speed can. So uh, obviously we need uh, some point to reach to the can bus to measure without having any problem, without actually trying to uh, reach to any other section of the wiring when we are trying to do the quick inspection. As I said earlier, your scan tool is going to be one part of the can bus when you try to diagnose uh, the car. Because when you connect your scan tool to DLC connector, your scan tool is going to be actually one part of the CAN box. So it's going to send a request for the information and all other control units will be communicating with your scan tool to send the information. So for finding the CCAN high and CCAN low, you can just have a look at here. This is the CCAN high and this one is the CCAN uh, low. But uh, on this car manufacturer, these numbers are just like this 1, 2, 3, 3 and 11 for, uh, for the can high and can low. But please uh, just try to have a look at this one as well because these numbers are only for electronic troubleshooting manual. What no those numbers that we need are actually the numbers on OBD2 itself. Okay, so our number is going to be uh, number 6 for can high C can high and number 14 for C can low so the only thing you need is uh, to find the OBD2 connector which is most of the time on the driver side find these two pin numbers 6 and 14 and we know that the pin number 6 is going to be for the CAN high and pin number 14 is going to be for the CAN low. And the rest is going to be what uh, I will explain to you guys on the car uh, to, uh, to inspect the CAN bus resistance, to inspect the CAN bus voltage and to read the waveform. So the first step for checking the CAN bus is uh, to check the total resistance. So as I said earlier, we can, you can reach to the CAN bus from the OBD2 connector, just as I did, uh, find pin number 6 and 14, and uh, check the total resistance uh, when ignition switch is off. So the total values should be something around 60 ohms, so we, already we have 62, which is acceptable. But you need to make sure ignition switch is off. But what happens if one of the CAN bus 
uh, resistance is it's not working. So what I do, I remove the ECU engine ECM connector just to uh, to disconnect the CAN bus resistance inside the ECM, and I'm gonna check the resistance again. And uh, what I read here, as a, as you see, is gonna be something around 120 ohms. So this value shows one of your CAN bus uh, terminating resistor uh, is not working. Next step is gonna be to check the voltage on the CAN bus. So what I do, uh, I'm gonna select the voltage on my multimeter and I go one by one. Uh, this time ignition switch must be on. Uh, I go one by one, I check the voltage on CAN bus high. As you see, I have 2.6 volts and just make sure the, the black cable is connected to the good ground. And on CAN bus low, I'm gonna have something around 2.4, 2.3 uh, volt. I can also check the short to ground uh, for CAN bus high and low. Uh, uh, continue function is going to help me for this. Ignition switch must be off. I can uh, put my red cable on CAN bus high and CAN bus low individually one by one and the other cable must be on ground. I shouldn't have any continuity uh, during this uh, test. Next step is going to be uh, reading the waveform using the picoscope. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to uh, put the uh, red prop on the canvas high and the black one should be connected to the ground. And just to make sure uh, that canvas is working, I'm going to start the car to make sure all the units connected to the canvas uh, are uh, sending and receiving the information. So I'm going to have a good waveform. So this is the waveform for the canvas high. So as you see, the waveform uh, is changing from 2.5 to uh, 3.5 volts. And if I change uh, the red prop to the CAN bus low, I'm gonna have the voltage dropping from 2.5 to 1.5 uh, voltage. So here you see the value on the CAN bus high. I'm going to have the voltage changing between 2.5 to 3.5 volts. This is what I get from the waveform. Uh, on the CAN bus low, my voltage is going to drop from 2.5 to 1.5. But what happens if I do have any short to ground on one of those CAN bus wires like the CAN bus high or CAN bus low? So of course, I, I won't have any communication, but what's going to happen to the waveform? So this is the uh, CAN bus high wave, waveform when everything is normal. But as soon as I make the short to ground, you see the voltage is gonna disappear. And what I'm gonna have is just a really, really bad waveform around zero uh, volt. So this one shows that the CAN bus is down and it's not working uh, anymore. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like the video, please don't forget to like and share the video with your friend. Thanks a lot.